Day 21, day 21, FCF. We're still in Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to pick up reading in verse 8. We're going to just read verse 8 and 9. And Paul's continuing this theme about the mysteries that God's now revealing, uh, particularly the mystery of you know, God in Christ and the full revelation of God's heart in Him, the culmination of all things uh, connecting to Him, and then the mystery that both Jew and Gentile will be brothers and fellow servants of God together in one body called the church. All right, verse 8, he says, Paul says, although I am, although I am less than least of all God's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. So here again, Paul uh, is emphasizing that he doesn't deserve this privilege at all, that, that he did nothing inherently righteous that God chose him, that, that this was just God's grace, it was his mercy, and he cherishes it. He, he's kind of saying, in essence, I have to pinch myself every once in a while to believe that I get to do this, that I get to tell people about the unsearchable riches of Christ. Um, folks, if, if we have Christ, we, we are the wealthiest, best-off people on the planet. We don't see it all now. We have an inheritance, the Scripture says, that is yet to come. But everything that a human heart could ever desire, we, we have. It's locked tight. It's preserved. It's, it's an inheritance for us in Christ. By belonging to Christ, we, we have all things. Uh, the best is yet to come for the followers of Christ. This is just a tiny, imperfect sample that we experience in this life. But, but Paul... He realized that this was an extraordinary privilege, that he got to take God's truth, communicate it to people, and then he was allowed to watch it change the hearts and lives and eternal destinies of human beings. There's no greater thing that we get a privilege of as followers of Christ than, than sharing Christ with others, inviting them to draw nearer to Christ and sharing his truth with them. So he, he emphasizes that part, the privilege that he had in verse 8. Then in verse 9, he says some kind of complex things. He says, to make plain to everyone the administration of this ministry, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. Now, I can't wait to get to verse 10, but I'll hold off because it takes us into the heavenly, eternal realms. But Paul is saying, once again, God's got a timetable. He's working out a plan. There, there was um, the patient, long-suffering gradual revelation, progressive revelation that God gave himself through the nation of Israel for 1,500 years. And this is all based on satanic slander. Once Satan had slandered God's character, the only way he could disprove what Satan had said about him would be to prove out his character over a long period of time, over lots of circumstances. But then he ultimately proves it out in the demonstration of his sacrificial love for us in Christ. But anyway, there's this, this mystery, this plan, this timetable that God has. And we, we don't always have a, a, an easy way to adjust to it. You know, it says the day with the Lord in 1 Peter 3, 8, or 2 Peter 3, 8. It says the day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. Uh, we, we want things to happen now. We only have this one brief life. And so it's hard for us to adjust that God has eras in which he does things, and we may or may not live in one of those eras. For example, 1,500 years, Israel waited for the Christ, waited for the Messiah. That meant that all those generations knew about the promise, but they didn't experience it. It was only the first century. Now, we happen to be living today in a unique time where all the Bible prophecies are pointing toward our age as the age when Christ will return. Now, whether we will or we won't experience that remains to be seen. But nevertheless, we're, we're living in one of those key eras. We can always count on one thing. If God puts us in a key era, he's going to give us the ability, the power, the wisdom, the resources we need to uh, effectively live in that particular era. So, Paul just wants uh, the Ephesians then to know that, that God's working out a plan. It's perfect. It's right on track, and we need to tuck that away for ourselves as well. We'll pick it up again tomorrow or next week. <laughs>